Hey guys, welcome back to Paper Made Me Do It. I've been pretty frustrated lately because about half the time I grab a fountain pen in my office, it either is almost out of ink or completely out of ink and doesn't write. So I decided to do a little project today and take all of the pens that were in my office and do some pen testing. I ended up testing 33 different pens, which is the majority of my current collection save about maybe five or six pins that are in different locations. So out of those 33 pins, the 18 that wrote well and are inked well got put to the side. So now I know when I grab them, they'll be inked and ready to go. The 15 that did not write well, that were either completely or almost out of ink, I put in a different group to the side and I'm going to clean all of them later this evening and put them away for storage and they can be um, reintegrated into the rotation at a later date. So if you would like to see these 33 pins tested out to see how they write and a few little comparisons that I made, just stick with me. Let's get started. Okay, so the first pen that I tested is the only Visconti fountain pen that I own. It is a Visconti Rembrandt fountain pen and when I originally ordered it, I ordered it in a stub nib, but the stub was at least twice the width that I'm used to. It was far too wide for me to use in daily functional writing. So I recently replaced it with a medium nib in stainless steel that I ordered from Goulet Pins online. And the medium nib writes very smoothly it's being shown here using Noodler's Lexington Gray, which is a waterproof ink. So that goes in the keep pile. Now this is my Lamy 2000. It has a gold nib, also in medium. And this is using a diamine ink. I can't remember the name of it. it starts with an R, um, but it's a blue, kind of navy, dark blue shade of ink. The Lamy writes super smooth, so it goes in the keep pile. This is my Y Studio Brassing Fountain Pen. It's definitely a favorite. <laughs> I try to post the cap out of habit, but uh, the cap actually does not post to this pen. So this is the writing sample. It does have a cartridge converter that is currently filled with Noodler's Black waterproof ink. But you can see the skipping. And so this is what I'm talking about. The whole reason I did this project, this is kind of the frustration that I've been feeling lately when I grab a pen and it writes like this. So um, this pen is obviously low on ink, so I put it to the side to go into the clean pile. Now this is a Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black. It is the regular size Vanishing Point. And as you can see, it is very low, if not practically out of ink. So it will go into the clean pile. This is another Pilot Vanishing Point. It is in the Decimo. And so here you can see that they're practically the same length, but the Decimo is um, not as large in size. The diameter of the pen itself is slightly smaller. So I'm just kind of testing it out. And you can see that it is also almost completely out of ink. It is in a stub nib and the matte black full size that was completely out of ink earlier is in a medium nib. <clears throat> so that one goes into the clean pile as well. And this is currently the only sailor pen that I own. It is a 1911 gold nib. it has one of the limited edition um, J Urban, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, brown inks. 
but it is out of ink, so it goes into the clean pile. This is a Waterman Paris fountain pen. And I tried to post the cap, but it felt like it was slipping around, so I tend to have a habit of just posting most of my caps automatically. But this is in a fine nib. Writes very, very smoothly. And this is the Montverde Green ink. It's a very dark green, almost black. So that one's writing very well, so it goes into the keep pile. And this is my other Waterman. Love both of my Watermans. Um, this one is probably my favorite though, the black one. It was actually a vintage pen that I um, purchased from Peyton Street Pens online. It is a Waterman Expert. And it is in a fine nib. But you can see by some of the skipping that it is low on ink as well. It is normally a very um, smooth, excellent writer, one of my favorites. So it's just gonna go to the side into the clean pile and I'll work it back into the rotation later. This is my latest addition to my collection. It is a Muji fountain pen, extremely lightweight metal pen, very um, inexpensive, affordable. I finally caved after seeing Peter Draws use this pen <laughs> several times. And it is a very nice writer. I like it a lot. So it goes into the keep pile. It was just recently inked. Now this is a brass pen. It needs to be cleaned up a bit. It is a Traveler's Company fountain pen. And you can see when I first started writing, I thought it was completely out of ink. And I ended up doing a little testing off to the side and come to find out it actually did start writing well. I have probably not touched this pen in at least six months, so it doesn't surprise me that it um, didn't want to start immediately. But it picked up nicely, so I ended up um, leaving it in the keep pile as well since it did write very well once the ink got started. This is a Coveco Sport brass pen. And I recently replaced the nib on it. So now it is writing with a fine nib. And when it first started, I thought it was gonna be fine. And then you can see how one of the letters um, started skipping. So I tested it a little further and lo and behold, this is one that would have driven me nuts if I had gotten halfway into a sentence in a journal or something like that and it started skipping. So it actually is running a bit low on ink and time to clean. This is another Caveco Sport. This is just the lightweight plastic material. This is in a white, it has gold accents, and it's in a fine nib. So that goes into the keep pile. And then the clip, I just showed a comparison here. Those clips come in silver and gold, and they have to be purchased separately. So I've bought them before from Goulet pens as well as Jet pens online, and they're fairly inexpensive. I want to say somewhere around $6, give or take. And so that's another fine. And then this is another Coveco Sport. And you can see here in the barrel that I've converted this one into an eyedropper pen. 
I just bought the kit from Goulet Pins that has the silicone grease. So it's nice to be able to actually see the ink when you have the uh, slightly transparent body. And this is an, an extra fine nib. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is another Caveco Sport, and you can see I don't have the additional clip on this one, so this is how the pen comes. They make a perfect pocket pen, and then when you post the cap, it makes them you know, more in line with a standard size pen. That's in a fine. And then I wrote off to the side here, uh, German fine, and you'll see a couple comparisons later with different makers. This is another Caveco Sport. And this is in a pretty purple ink and a medium nib. But honestly, I really can't tell the difference between the fine and the medium nib on those sport pens. And so this is a Pilot Prera and fine nib. And you can see the comparison here between the German fine and the Japanese fine. The Japanese fine has a much thinner stroke. I have a couple of other Pilot Preras in medium, but um, unfortunately I had already uh, clean them a while back and put them into storage so that they don't get tested here. This was another fine that was out on my desk, but apparently is completely out of ink at this point, so it'll go into the clean and store pile. That's an ivory. And then here is a demonstrator. I just wanted to show you it has the clear body, which obviously doesn't have a cartridge or converter in it, so it's just going to stay in the clean and store pile for now. And this is a Pilot Kakuno, which is a very inexpensive pen, but I've always found them to be dependable writers, and it's in a fine nib. And this is another demonstrator version, and you can see that the cartridge is completely empty, so it'll go into the clean and store pile. Well, this is a cross pen that you can pick up at any like Office Max or Office Depot. They're usually in around the $20 to $30 range. And it is in a medium nib. <laughs> I don't use uh, my cross pens as often. I have a handful of them, but they do write very, very smoothly. But I've only ever found them in medium. And when they're properly cleaned and inked, they're actually very juicy pens. So if that uh, had been properly inked, it would be writing much bolder than it did. But you can see that cross medium is low on ink. This is another cross pen. Um, I call it almost like a purse pen. It's very, very um, thin in diameter and lightweight but it is completely out of ink, so it'll go into the clean pile to be cleaned. Now we get into the Twisbees. So I'm starting out with this Twisby Mini. It is in extra fine. Writing just fine. And this is a testament to the Twisby pens because I haven't touched this pen, I said, in at least six months. It's been possibly even a good bit longer than that. And you can see that it just immediately started writing again. So Twisbees are great if you need a pen that doesn't have to constantly have its hand held. If you, you know, or one that maybe does sit a pen down and not write with it for weeks or months at a time and you want it to just start back when you need it, then uh, Twisby is actually pretty good about that. So here's a Twisby Mini 1.1 stub nib. It had a little bit of a hard start, but I haven't touched this one in a very long time either once it got warmed up. 
you can see that it writes very smoothly and this is the size stub that I'm used to the 1.1 now this is a Choisby Mini Vac Fill, so you can see it's slightly larger than the regular Mini, and there's the comparison to a full-size Twisby Eco. So the Vac Fill is kind of right in between, closer to the size of the Mini, but just a hair larger. I actually do not care for the Vac Fill. It is the only Vac Fill pen that I own, and it's my least favorite filling mechanism. But the pen itself, the nib, writes just as well as um, all of the other Twisbees. So it was kind of acting finicky here and that's not normal for a Twisbee. They're normally very um, smooth and good writers. So even though there is ink in it, just because it's not performing like I know it normally does, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the to be cleaned and stored pile for now. And here we get into my little handful of the Twisby Ecos, Eco Echo. These are um, excellent starter pins in my opinion because they're very affordable but good dependable writers and they are made in Taiwan so just to go back to that comparison that we looked at earlier between the German and the Japanese the Taiwan uh, pen writes closer to the Japanese fine and that was actually I just realized an extra fine that I was comparing and not a fine <laughs> All of my Twisbees write smoothly though, no matter what the nib size, and I have every size you'll see here in just a minute. They all write very, very well. There's another stub nib in the Eco. This is another Eco. I love this ink color. It's an Orochizuku ink. And it's in a medium nib. And then here's another Twisby Eco and another Orochizuku ink. Can't remember the names of each of those offhand. I'll try to put the ink color in the description box below if it's something you're interested in. And initially I wrote bold nib and then I realized that it should have been broad instead of bold. I was just thinking of the B. And then this is another Twisby Echo in fine. And you can see that even in the fine nib, you can see a little shading in this ink. This is one of my favorite inks. It's the Noodler's Apache Sunset. And then this Echo I dropped on the floor and you can see the edge of the top of the cap cracked or broke off a little section which makes me so sad because this turquoise I remember being fairly difficult for me to find so it still writes well so I'm keeping it and that was in fine and then this is a Montferde I guess it's called an Ascenza um, I, that didn't sound familiar to me, but that's what was imprinted on the edge of the bottom of the cap. I have struggled with this pen since I first bought it, so it's going into the clean and store pile. I may end up doing a giveaway later with it to see if anyone else would like to give it a try, see if maybe someone else has better luck than me, but this pen as I'm writing here, it has always skipped even after cleaning and re-inking since the day that I bought it. So, sadly, I'm going to go ahead and clean it, but it probably will not work its way back into my collection. I just haven't been a fan so far. So, 
that is all of the testing. I ended up with 18 pens that wrote well that now I know when I reach for, they're gonna be dependable writers. And then those other 15 are gonna be cleaned and stored. If you haven't done this to your own collection recently, I highly recommend it. I think it's gonna make me much more likely to use the pens now that I know that they're inked. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.